Welcome to DWBI Adda channel. Please subscribe for latest training videos. Welcome everyone. In this particular video, we'll be learning about model evaluation. Model evaluation is an integral part of the model development process. It helps to find the best model that represents our data and how well the chosen model will work in the future. Evaluating model performance with the data used for training is not acceptable in data science because it can easily generate over-optimistic and overfitted models. Model evaluation can be divided into two sections, regression evaluation and classification evaluation. Let us first talk about regression evaluation. This is the script we used in our tutorial Simple Linear Regression. Here I have imported all my libraries. I have also imported my data set. I will remind you my data set was of annual franchise fee and startup cost where we predicted the startup cost using the annual franchise fee. My x value was my annual franchise fee and my y was my startup cost. Then I have split my data giving my test size as 3 by 5. Then we have fit our regression model and then we have tried to predict all our values, all our test values. Now I will be focusing on what is actually the model evaluation part. So we used a particular function called mean squared error. What does mean squared error means? Mean squared error is a popular formula to measure the error rate of a regression model. However, it can only be compared between models whose errors are measured in the same unit. So we have imported the mean squared error function from sklearn.metrics and we have passed our actual y testing data and our prediction data. This will calculate the mean squared error. And then we, I have done the square rooting of it which will give us the square root of mean squared error. The minimum this value is, the good your model is. One more great alternative for regression evaluation is scikit-learn's cross-validation feature. This particular code is a k-fold cross-validation. It randomly splits the training set into 10 distinct subsets called folds. Then it trains and evaluates the model 10 times, picking a different fold for evaluation every time and training on the other 9 folds. The result is an array containing 10 evaluation scores. Now let's run the script. So I've got my mean squared error as this and then doing the square root of the mean squared error, I've got 158.59. The next output is our cross validation output in which each of the folds RMSC scores, that is the root mean square scores were calculated. Now let's move on to classification evaluation. Now consider we have a binary classification and this is my actual values and these are my predicted values. So let us try to make a confusion matrix out of it. What is a confusion matrix? We'll know. So we have imported this confusion matrix uh, function from sklearn.matrix and we have uh, passed our actual and predicted data. To compute the confusion matrix, you first need to have a set of predictions 
and also the actual target values. This is the confusion matrix we have got. The confusion matrix is a NumPy array. Here you can map this particular array with this image. 4 is nothing but TN. TN stands for true negative, which means your actual value was no and you also predicted as it has no. 2 resembles to your falsely positive, which means your actual value was no, but it predicted it as yes. Next, 1 will be mapped to as Fn, falsely negative. Your actual value was yes, but it predicted it as no. And lastly, 3 will be mapped to as Tp, which is truly positive. That is, your actual value was yes, and it also correctly predicted it as yes. Now, now let us learn about accuracy score. It means the proportion of total number of predictions that were correct. First you need to import the function accuracy underscore score from sklearn.metrics and then pass your actual values and your predicted values to it. The output will be your accuracy score. In our case we have got 0.7 as your accuracy score. That means 70% of the predicted values were accurate. Here I have extracted the individual array values into individual variables. We have two more attributes associated in model evaluation. One is sensitivity and specificity. Sensitivity or it's also called as recall. It is the proportion of actual positive cases which are correctly identified. And specificity stands for the proportion of actual negative cases which are correctly identified. For sensitivity, you need to import recall underscore score from sklearn.metrics and pass actual and predicted values in the function. Whereas for specificity, you need to do it manually. There is no such functions available. Sensitivity is the formula for sensitivity is true positive divided by the total row values that is false negative plus true positive. Whereas specificity is true negative divided by the total row values true negative plus false positive. Here I have got the output of sensitivity by calculating it manually as 0.75 and also using the function as 0.75 whereas my specificity is 0.667 then we have precision which says that how accurate or precise your model is that means how many positive values were actually there among the predicted ones so we have the formula as truly positive divided by the total of truly positive and falsely positive. So we have calculated it manually and also there's a function called pre precision underscore score which we have imported from sklearn.metrics and we have passed our actual and predicted values to it. So what precision we have got is 0 0.6, 0 0.6 so it's the same. We have another one function called as classification underscore report which will provide you with the precision recall and other two parameters which we won't be talking about right now in which you need to pass on your actual data and your predicted data and it will give you a report of all these attributes. Another method for uh, Classification evaluation is ROC, that is Receiver Operating Characteristic. The ROC curve plots the true positive rate against the false positive rate. The false positive rate is the ratio of negative instances that are incorrectly classified as positive. It is equal to 1 minus the true negative rate 
which is the ratio of negative instances that are correctly classified as negative. The true negative rate is also called specificity. Hence, the ROC curve plots sensitivity versus 1 minus specificity. To plot the ROC curve, you first need to compute the TPR and the FPR, that is the true positive rate and the false positive rate for various threshold values using the ROC underscore curve. And this function, we have imported it from sklearn.metrics and passed actual and predicted values as parameters. So this is the graph we got. The dotted line represents the ROC curve of a purely random classifier. A good classifier stays as far away from the line as possible, that is towards the top left corner. One way to compare classifiers is to measure the area under the curve. A perfect classifier will have a ROC AUC equal to 1, whereas a purely random classifier will have a ROC AUC equal to 0 0.5. Scikit-learn provides a function to compute the ROC AUC. You need to import this ROC underscore AUC underscore score function from sklearn.metrics and you have to pass the actual and predicted values as parameters. Once you do that, you get a value. Here we have got 0 0.70 which is pretty decent. That means our classifier is 70% successful in getting the predicted values correct.